That's whether people think it was a flimsy branch or not. I never gave any permission for my horse to be hit with anything. Hey bitch, and welcome back to me talking about people I hate. <sighs> and also dealing with lawsuits, but that's another story. <laughs> Today's video is actually not that shocking at all because something that I've been saying for a long time is that this goes on. This happens behind the scenes with so many professional riders. But before we talk about it, I wanna say a massive thank you to this video's sponsor. So thank you so, so much to Ana Luisa Jewelry. You guys know how much I love them. All the jewelry that I wear in my videos is from Ana Luisa Jewelry. I've been working with them for years. They've sponsored so many videos. If you don't know anything about Ana Luisa Jewelry, they are an amazing earth conscious jewelry company. They create the most beautiful pieces of jewelry. Ana Luisa Jewelry is committed to finding new sustainable paths to crafting their jewelry. They explore innovative materials and processes that are good for not only you, but the environment, which is super important. We love a company that offsets their carbon footprint, and that's the biggest reason why I love Ana Luisa Jewelry. I will never go with any other jewelry company because they have been the best. You can literally read about the company's impact assessment, carbon neutrality, water neutrality, and circularity on their website. My favorite thing about Ana Luisa Jewelry, aside from their products, is the fact that they really do care about how they manufacture their jewelry and where they get it from. They really focus on ethical manufacturing, fundamentals like health and safety, women's rights, child labor, forced labor, and these are all practices that really do need to be focused and honed in on, especially in jewelry industries. But let's not talk too much about how great of a brand they are. I mean, let me show you guys some of these pieces. I, first of all, have so many amazing, beautiful pieces from all of their collections. I mean, I'm wearing one of my favorite rings right now, which I should be wearing my engagement ring, but oops. They're also not expensive at all, super affordable, really high quality jewelry. You guys will not be disappointed. They have rings, bracelets, earrings, necklaces, and more all unique, all beautifully crafted and long lasting. They're just so gorgeous. I've even bought Ana Luisa jewelry for my family members. So if you guys are interested in shopping from Ana Luisa jewelry, which I know you are, and I know you have actually, a lot of you guys have been buying from them. That link is in the description down below and I'd really appreciate it if you would check them out because honestly, they're one of the best sponsors I've ever had. So check them out, you guys. You can shop my link. It's gonna be the first link in the description and oh, thank you so much, Anna. I love you. Toddy, 20 quid if you jump the red oxer at the bottom. Hey, stop! I, why? Sir Mark Todd. Can we just get rid of the sir, actually? Can I just call him Mark Todd? Because if you guys are unfamiliar with what's been going on with Olympic gold medalist Mark Todd over the last few days... Do you even exist? Oh, Chloe. Chloe released a video initially on TikTok, which has since been removed for community guidelines violations, which is like actually hilarious, of her doing a clinic with Mark Todd back in 2020. And in this clinic, Mark Todd is seen relentlessly beating Chloe's horse completely unexpectedly 10 times with a switch, which is a tree branch. And any of you guys who have been raised in the South of the United States like me, if you've been hit with a switch, which I know you have, it freaking hurts. I actually literally still have a scar from one. So if it's considered child abuse, I think it it's also safe to be assumed that it should be considered horse abuse as well, you know? I heard from someone saying it's so shocking that so many of these Olympic equestrians are being outed and exposed for abusing animals now. I'm sorry, is it really that shocking to you? Because it's definitely not to me. Chloe's video went viral over the weekend. It got millions of views on TikTok. She also posted it on her Instagram along with the longer version. In the full video, you can see that 
he wanted Chloe to go and bring her horse around multiple times and have her horse jump down this six inch drop into the water. And as Chloe had previously explained, she mentioned to them that her horse had some issues with his feet and he was really nervous when he would jump down into the water. And what Mark Todd had agreed to do was smack a tree branch on the ground to create some sound like what you would a lunge whip to get the horse to jump into the water. Which, to be honest, that's kind of a dubious practice at best, but I don't have an issue with it. I mean, many people use lunge whips. I use lunge whips, but a lot of people use lunge whips for sound or direction, whatever, and it's not that big of a deal. What scares me about this video is how Mark Todd has Chloe come around one last time and have her horse jump down off of the larger bank and her horse refuses. So Mark Todd hits the ground one time with the tree branch. And as soon as he realizes that that's not gonna work, he immediately goes right to beating the horse with the stick. Hey. In what world is that a proper escalation of circumstances? It doesn't matter what happened before or after this video. What you see in the video is completely inexcusable. But I wanted to create this video because I wanted to give Chloe a platform where she could share her side of the story. Because the most important thing about this story is her ability to speak out and stand up for a traumatic situation that she went through and she experienced. And this is something that unfortunately a lot of other equestrians relate to. Needless to say though, of course Mark Todd came out and made a statement, obviously. He said, I wholeheartedly apologize to the horse and all involved for my actions in this video clip. One of the main things I preach is about establishing a mutual respect between horse and rider and that patience and kindness is the best way to get results. I believe this is one of the main attributes along with a great empathy with animals that has enabled me to have a long and successful career in eventing. I am very disappointed in myself that I did not adhere to that in this case. Now here's what I will say, in Mark Todd's defense, that's a really good apology. It doesn't mean that people shouldn't be speaking out on him anymore because I think in a way he was probably just apologizing to get this to go away immediately. If Mark Todd was doing this to any other animal or if Mark Todd was a completely unknown person that didn't have any gold medals, no one would be defending him. And that's a fact. So anyone who's going to defend him and say it's not that bad, you would absolutely not be defending him if he was a no name or if that was a dog or a cat. One thing that I find very disturbing about this issue, and this happens a lot with a lot of Olympians that get called out or famous trainers, there are a ton of articles online. Anytime a professional gets called out, they find it necessary to talk about all their accomplishments. Like, oh yeah, he was caught on camera beating a horse, but he's like a six-time gold medalist and he has all these other achievements. It's like, why is that relevant right now? Mark Todd stepped down immediately as, <laughs> as a patron of world horse welfare. Dude, the fact that this guy was part of an equine welfare organization Oh my god. <sighs> a spokesman for World Horse Welfare described the treatment of the horse as disturbing and unacceptable and added that to Mark's credit, stop. Stop right now. We don't need to be adding anything to his credit. You're a horse welfare organization. You should not be adding anything to any animal abuser's credit. Thank you. When the video came to his attention, he contacted the charity and voluntarily stepped down from his role as World Horse Welfare patron. Yeah, he stepped down from his role because he knew you guys were gonna kick him out regardless. I'm sorry. 
There is no place in the horse-human partnership for such use of force. Mark agrees that his behavior was wrong, and we welcome his apology. Mark is a consummate horseman who cares deeply for horses and their welfare, but in this case, either through losing his patience or acting out of frustration, he has badly let himself down, said the spokesperson for an equine welfare organization. If you're a spokesman for an equine welfare organization and you're defending equine abuse, wow. Saying that he's badly let himself down, how about the horse that he beat? How about the rider who was a kid who was too afraid to speak up that was in a traumatic situation watching her animal get abused and she's got to carry that forever? I wanted to get Chloe on a Zoom call and I really wanted Chloe to share her side of the story and have a platform to speak her truth and talk to you guys about what she's been going through and why she shared this story and why it's important that more people speak out. So I wanted to give her the chance to say that right now. This should should never be a one man with hunt like yeah. and if he's being threatened and things that like I don't personally condone that like yeah but that is kind of something that other people need to like look at themselves and say like should I really be saying this to someone else and it works in reverse as well like some of the things that people have said to me recently and I'm no way like complaining because I'm the one that posted this video like I understood there was two sides when I posted it right but, like some of the things that people have said to me recently like it's just not any way to speak to like a human like yeah it's just so like threatening and abusive what people have been saying to me like I've been told I'm bringing about the end of equestrian sport and I'm just like how can one person single-handedly do that like this has been in a decline for so long it's so normalized in the industry I mean a lot of my professional friends they tell me about it all the time how much abuse they see because it's just so normalized and everyone does it and it's actually shocking and what's so disappointing is when people are outed instead of any of these organizations actually doing anything they're just like oh well we don't condone that but they don't actually do anything to the rider they just say that they don't condone it and then all these other people try to defend them because they're professionals but it's like if they weren't a professional would you be defending them probably not you know I just think as well like we are so privileged to be able to do our sport in an olympic level and like if we are behaving in this manner in order to get to that level like should we really be having the privilege of like competing at olympic level if this is what we are doing in order to like yeah. get to that level like why is there not a cap when it's like you can't be behaving like this clearly it's an issue that i never in a million years dreamed to be as big of an issue as it is yeah like so many people have come forward and like when I posted on my TikToks, like I maybe get a couple of thousand views on most of my TikToks. I have the odd few that get more. But like I never once expected anyone to be as interested in something I posted. Like I never realized yeah. how far this would have gone. And it's just been like a bit of a shock to the system when I'm like, okay, like this is such a thing. And like, I've been like part of the sport since I was five years old. Yeah. But then I've never really been like had my eyes open to like obviously I've seen things in the news and I've seen things being spoken about but I just don't think I quite realized on what scale it's normalized my horse is my absolute best friend like yeah he is the center of my life and like if he decided that he was not wanting to do what I wanted to do like that's fine like I don't like plan on ever pushing him past the level he's comfortable. I think people just see the fact that, oh, he did a small one. And by small, I mean, it was like six inches. Like it's the smallest step down you'll ever see. And so he did a small one. So why would he not do a big one? And it's like, because like, that's not how horses process things like they don't go oh I've done a small one therefore a big one's fine like yeah we were we were talking about this yesterday how horses horses and people obviously are completely different species yeah. and learn completely differently and understand things completely differently so for people to 
think that a horse has the same way of thinking as them is ridiculous. And that's why when I when I see people who say, well, the horse should know better, the horse should know this, the horse should know that it's like, but they're not people though. Like they don't learn things the same way people do. They don't understand things the same way. And that's what just drives me crazy about people who say stuff like that. People seem to believe I gave permission for this to happen and I didn't. What was told to me was, we were going to use this branch with leaves on it to make a noise behind him in order to kind of like shoo him forward. Yeah, kind of like lunging like you would with yeah. a lunge whip or something. Yeah. Um, it was to make a noise behind him to sort of encourage him forwards, which was fine. Um, I yeah. was in ride forward and look ahead where I was going. The full video is out there for people to watch. There is no laps in between me jumping I consistently come round and round there was no time to have a conversation between making a noise to then hitting my horse like I absolutely did not give permission for it to happen mm -hmm. and I think above everything else whether people think it's bad not bad maybe an issue it's only fine because of who he is the bottom line of it is I never consented to that to happen to my horse well and, and it's not even his horse too that's what's so wild it, about the video is that you know it's so weird to me that obviously I, I find it repulsive to treat your own horses that way, but it's so insane that it wasn't even his horse and he was so comfortable doing that, which to me, it's such a red flag as to how he treats other people's horses too. I mean, it's like, why would he be so comfortable just hitting your horse? It's so weird. At the end of the day, there was no permission there. Therefore, it shouldn't have been done. And that is what needs to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. But else, whether people think it was a flimsy branch or not, I never gave any permission for my horse to be hit with anything. All of the people who have come out and been like, yeah, this also happened to me. I experienced situations like this, and I don't know if I would have had the courage to stand up. I mean, I think it's amazing that you're kind of at the forefront of this issue right now on calling out bad trainers that like put their students in a position, you know, there's a power dynamic issue there and they're supposed to be the trainer. They're supposed to be the one that the student looks up to, that the student takes advice from. And you're never really supposed to question your trainer because they're the one who's supposed to know everything and teach you. And I think what I wanted to talk to you about was how did you feel in that moment when he started doing that did you just get really really scared were you shocked like what was the actual feeling because i saw a lot of people and i know it's personally happened with me being put in a situation like that by somebody that you look up to and trust it's kind of shocking you know yeah and so obviously i had no idea at the time like I was told he was going to make the noise and I had no reason to believe that there would be any progression past that. Yeah. So like I had an inclination from how Harry was behaving. Like he was obviously went from nervous to like, he totally coiled himself up and was like rocking back and forward in front of the jump, like not knowing where to go. And he was almost like frantic, which is obviously a total progression from what he looks like in the approach on yeah. the other however I didn't actually know and then afterwards me and my partner were speaking and he was like I think you need to watch back these videos and so once he said that I kind of had this thought process like okay this has obviously been a situation that's happened um and then then I was obviously brushed aside and told oh well he didn't hit him that hard and like hours later when I got home I went and watched back my videos and then realized like this was a scenario where actually he did hit him that hard and he did hit him excessively. Yeah. And whether he, whether he hit him hard or not, like you can hear in the video, people can hear with their own ears what they believe. But the point is it was 10 times in a row, which by any rule book is excessive. I wanted to end this by asking you, um, what do you want people to take away from your video? What do you hope people learn from your video? I want to preface that none of my videos are monetized and I have not gained a single penny from this because that seems to be spreading around as well for whatever reason. Um, but if oh anyone wants to just have a take home message, it's like, I know there will be people that speak against you regardless of what you do and what you say. There will be people that oppose you and there'll be people that have different opinions, but if there's something that you believe is wrong, it needs to be highlighted. And I'm not saying 
I have done it in the correct way by taking it to social media. Um, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should have. That's kind of besides the point. But like, if something is wrong and you feel like it's wrong, it most likely is. And just because people are telling you it's not wrong, doesn't like make it okay. Just because it happens, doesn't make it okay. And just because there are worse things in the world, doesn't make any of it okay. From my video coming out, like people just need to know that the majority do support what I have said and do support that it's not acceptable. Like you will always get people with different opinions. You will always get people with opposing opinions. There's been thousands and thousands, like into tens of thousands of people agreeing and sharing and messaging me saying that like either they've been in a similar situation and like now that I have spoken out, they plan on speaking out and like it is something that needs to be talked about and it's something that needs to be sort of discussed and like fixed within our sport. Like it's not to say we have a bad sport in the slightest. The sport needs to evolve. Like you can't be using these techniques against horses. And I think the biggest thing for me is if anyone was to take anything from the video is like you absolutely need to be an advocate for your horse. Like yeah. your horse cannot speak. They cannot tell us what they do or don't want to do. They cannot tell us. And I don't think to my day I have ever met a horse that is just naughty because it's malicious. Like there has always yeah. been a root of the like a root of the cause for behavior in horses, whether it be they don't understand or they're nervous. And like we as people need to advocate that. And I personally failed to advocate for my horse on this scenario. Um and like You're advocating it, for him now though. Yeah. But at the time, I failed to advocate for my horse. However, I would like to think he's forgiven me for that, like, two years down the line. I think he... It happens to everyone. I mean, I think everybody's been put in a situation like that. You know, it's something that you just got to forgive yourself for. And and the thing that upsets me the most is, um, you know, these people are not the root of the problem. I mean, they've, they've been trained by people to make yeah. it seem normal to them. And that's why they perpetrate it. You know, that's why they continue the cycle is because the people who trained them told them that it was normal and it was okay, yeah. you know? And so it's been going on for decades and, and even centuries. And I think that's why it's so important that the equestrian community is finally starting to evolve. I wanted to thank Chloe again so, so much for joining me on the Zoom call. I hope that you guys really enjoyed listening to her. I think that it is of the utmost importance that people are not afraid to speak out about current or past abuse that they or their horses suffered. And honestly, it's quite shocking to be placed in a situation like that. I've been placed in situations like that many times in my life, especially as a child, which is why I'm an animal activist now, where I was too afraid to speak up. And I always said to myself that when I became an adult, I would never be afraid to speak up for animals in the care of animals. I have to say though, I do not hold other people to the same standard because many people handle traumatic situations differently and a lot of people handle that by shutting down. So if you have ever been in a situation where you or your horse was abused or any animal was abused and you were too afraid to speak up, know that it's never too late to do so, but also don't blame yourself for that because it's not your fault. It's the fault of the person that put you in that situation to begin with. But I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. Definitely check out Chloe, check out her YouTube channel, check out her Instagram and TikTok. I will link all of those down below. And once again, I wanted to thank her so much for joining me for this video. I truly appreciate it. And I wanted to let her speak her truth and get her story out there. And to anybody else who has been in a similar situation, just know that you have the support of the equestrian community and that it's never too late to speak up. But I love you guys so much. Thank you so so much again to Ana Luisa Jewelry for sponsoring this video. Definitely remember to check that link, which will be in the description down below. But otherwise, I love you guys, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!